All right, Shalom. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Harakakudash. Double honor to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopefully elect. It's the brother Azariah here with the Pittsburgh GMS camp. All right, and I want to go, to, go into a quick lesson. I'm going to entitle this lesson, okay, The Heathen of Salvation, all right? And so, um, basically, this is the response to uh, the whole thing with Vocab Malone, okay, talking about the fumble, uh, s supposed fumble that Sakari had, all right, <clears throat> going into uh, Galatians 3 and 8. Now, I would like to say, uh, Salakia, you know, I've been having some things going on, which we all do. We all have our own personal health, you know, so uh, Salakia so for, you know, the the infrequency of my videos i'm working on that okay but i had some uh, very important things that uh which nothing's more important than this truth but it was like potentially dangerous things that i had to remedy so that you know um so that you know family can be safe you know my immediate family the wife and so on you know what i'm saying so uh yes yeah, so lock you those things hey man hey you, we gotta endure until the end right so anyway back to this lesson all right so i'm gonna start off with with these precepts, man, because you got to understand that the scriptures and, and, and you can kind of see this. You see this more in the English language, but it happens also in, in this interpretation of the Hebrew that we have. OK, now who's to say how it's really going to be once we have the full understanding of the Hebrew in the kingdom? There may be different ways of actually physically saying these things that make them more defined of what each word means. But sometimes a word is used and it has many different uh, 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 connotations or uh, many different uh, uh, um, um, let's see if that's even the word usages usages right so let's get this uh, first precept okay so what we're going into is basically okay the two types of heathen or strangers okay because heathen and strangers is kind of synonymous okay now uh, we can read first we can read uh, this, this scripture the Galatians all right which I wasn't planning on going to this, but we'll, we'll grab it real quick. Galatians 3 and 8. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me close a lot of this stuff, man. Let me get in the blue letter. Okay. Galatians 3. Cut on the strongs. And go to verse 8. It says, And the scripture, and the scripture foreseeing that the Most High would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Okay? So, as you can see, the scripture talks about the heathen being justified. Okay? Let's get these words here. This is uh, the word for justify. To render righteous or such he ought be. To show, exhibit one to be righteous. To declare, pronounce one to be just, righteous, or such as he ought to be. Oh, okay. Uh, ethnos. Okay. Now this word ethnos says a multitude, whether of men or beasts, associated or living together, a company, troop, or swarm, a multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus, the human family, a tribe, nation, group, or people, or people group. In the Old Testament, foreign nations not worshiping the true power, pagans or Gentiles. Paul uses the term for Gentile Christians. All right. And so, you know, there's a lot on that. And as you can see, the different usages. Okay. Down here, it says a race or nation, a multitude, and pretty much just the same thing over and over. This is a uh, uh, ha ga wayam ha ga wayam okay if i'm not mistaken that's a high uh let me double check here with my little cheat sheet yeah ha ga wayam so that's the strangers ga wayam okay so this is this will be the word in hebrew all right ga wayam okay or you know which I don't even think I can copy that. Let me see. Yeah, Wiktionary. Ain't worry about it. All right, so 
you know so let's get to this precept because there's more than one type of stranger all right i'm gonna go to leviticus 25 and 35 okay book of leviticus chapter 25 we we'll start at verse 35. Turn on the Strongs. All right. All right. It says, And if thy brother be waxen poor and fallen in decay with thee, then shalt thou relieve him, yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with thee. So let's get these words stranger and sojourner. Okay. So it's gar. Okay. Stranger, alien, sojourner, stranger. You see, a sojourner, a temporary inhabitant, a newcomer lacking inherited rights. It says, of foreigners in Israel, though conceded rights. Okay? Gar and uh, Gawar. It goes back to Gawar. Okay, which is to sojourn, to abide, to dwell, to inhabit, to be a stranger. And when you come to a new place, you're a stranger to that place, right? When you go somewhere, you're a stranger. You're a stranger because you never, you know, you've never been there, or you, you know, things of that nature. That's not your native land. Okay, that's one of the contexts of the usages. Okay, so let's uh continue on here. So this is the word for stranger. And this is the word for sojourner right here. Sojourner. Okay. Sojourner. H8453. Which, uh, let me unplug this. I can let, let this play. I don't even know why I let that play. Because he, of course, he going to pronounce it wrong. Thawa, thawa shab, thawa shab, okay, a sojourner or a stranger, okay, and there's many different usages of it, you know, but let's move on, let's, uh, Leviticus 25, right, let's get Leviticus 25, because that's just the first scripture, so we, we saw those two definitions, Leviticus 25, again, in 39, I'm going to skip to 39, it says, uh, And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor, and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bondservant. So this is telling you how to deal with an Israelite that has been sold unto you. He may have fell on hard times. Maybe somebody stole him, and then they sold him. And he, you, you end up buying him, right? So you buy him, but um, it's telling you not to make him a bondservant, which is the word I bought, okay? The word I bought, which goes into slavery, okay? So when they say, when they do the, the curses and they say I bought, we know they're talking about servitude. May servitude be upon the heathen that, that reigned Babylon the Great. That's right, man. The patience and the faith of the saint. Now let's continue. Um, okay. Leviticus 25 and 39. Okay. Thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant. So. Uh, let's read okay 40 but as an hired servant and as a sojourner he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of jubilee so the word sojourner is here again see so he's not going to be unto you as a as a bond servant he's not going to be a slave but in this case he's going to be a sojourner you see which is what You'll see, you'll see by the end of this lesson that there's many usages for these words. And if you don't understand the context of the scriptures, you can easily get it confused. Okay? Thawashab again, right? Stranger, a sojourner. A dweller, but not outlandish, especially as distinguished from a native citizen, a temporary inmate, or a mere lodger. See, so this will probably be like a temporary inmate. Temporary inmate gar, wow! Even that has a uh, a different usage. An immigrant, so he's going to be unto you like somebody who doesn't have rights, basically. So when it talks about a stranger, okay, 
it's not always talking about some damn foreigner, man. Okay, sometimes it's talking about an Israelite who's come to your land who doesn't have any rights. He's he's new to it. It's like you live in you live in a city and a Jake come in from out of town and he don't know no he don't know nobody. He don't know nothing. He's not from that place. So he's like a he's a sojourner. He's a stranger. You know, he's a newcomer. Like it says right here, a stranger, an immigrant, sojourning in a strange country where he is not naturalized. He he, he he fresh out the water. He green as hell. He don't know nothing. You know what I mean? You got to teach him the slang, teach him where the corner store at. You got to teach him how to operate. You got to teach him what the different slang mean. You know, if I didn't already say that, he don't know nothing. All right. So, uh, so let's keep going. Just, just pointing out how it had multiple meanings. Leviticus 25, and we're going to go to 41 now. And then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family, and unto the possession of his fathers shall he return. Now you got to remember, this guy was already sold into captivity. He didn't become your servant, and then you give him children. Okay? It said, he shall return unto his own family. You see? So just kind of showing you, you know, he was already sold to you. Verse uh, 20, verse 42. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. So this is the distinction of the Israelites. He's saying, look, those are my people. This your brother, bro. So y'all ain't going to be slaves no more. Or, or y'all should not be sold as slaves, which, you know, we end up going back into captivity. And we're still there to this day, man, where we got to pay taxes and whatnot. That's that's tributary, man. When you have to give tribute, okay, that's a form of, of slavery. All right? Leviticus 25 and 43, Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, but shall fear thy power. All right, so now we're going to switch gears and look at another side of this word, strangers and heathens. So now we're going to get to verse 44. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen, that are round about you. <clears throat> so, if we just read about the strangers and said that they was not going to be, okay, um, a, a, a bondmen, okay, that was talking about Israelites. Now it's showing us who are going to be the bondmen, okay, which is you other nations, you other nations, Gawaya, apparently from the same root as. Uh, Gawa, okay, behind Gawaya, a nation of people, uh, usually of non Hebrew people. See how there's many different options of descendants of Abraham, but we know the descendants of Abraham, you know, um, shouldn't be our slaves. Well, even though Abraham had different sons, so you know, I, I scratched that, but then it talks about Israel, okay? So we know the Israelites, we just read the Israelites ain't gonna be by men. So how come Israel is included in this one? Okay, because it has many different connotations, many different many different contexts. Okay, let me make sure I'm using that word right. An idea or feeling that a word invokes, in addition to its literal or primary meaning. Yeah, kind. An idea or feeling that a word invokes, in addition to its literal or primary meaning. So, okay, there's different meanings. There's a there's a there's something that comes to mind when you hear a stranger. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word stranger? You think another nation. That's the first thing that comes to mind. But there are literal and other primary uh, meanings. You see, there are, the primary it just means a nation, nation people. Okay, that's it. Just nations. All right. So let's continue. Uh, <clears throat> verse uh, 45. Moreover, moreover of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, they shall be your possession. So wait a minute. Here we go again. Okay. Thawashab. Now it's saying that this Thawashab can be purchased as a bondman. 
and a bondmaid. But we just read the other thought was shop. Okay. There was the brethren. When we started in verse 35. You know, if he be waxing poor, then you shall relieve him. And let's go down again to. Uh, what was it? 39. And he, if he be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve thee. But as an hired servant and a sojourner, he shall be with thee. Okay? So, go war. So, now we're going. So, you know, you're just seeing that there's multiple ways to use these words. So, let's, get, let's go back down to uh, verse uh, 45. Okay, so, so that word sojourn means to travel or to dwell. To remain, to inhabit, to dwell for a time, you know. Goes back to Gawar. <clears throat> okay. Verse 46. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you. To inherit them for, for a possession, they shall be your bondmen forever. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. You see, so even when there was Hebrew Hebrew servants that were sold to another man, you know, and they were sold to you, you were not supposed to be ruling over them with rigor like you would a heathen. You see, there was different rules set up. When we had the heathen, we was breaking them in pieces. We was they were served, they were slaves. But when you had another Hebrew, he was just like a hired servant. He wasn't he wasn't somebody that you were supposed to be beaten on and abusing. But the heathens was a different story. They're your inheritance. So you're seeing that further separation between the two sojourners. Okay? So, uh, let's go to verse 47, right? Let me make sure. Yeah, yeah, verse 47. It says, um, And if a sojourner or a stranger wax rich by thee and thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor and sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee or to the stock of the stranger's family after that he is sold he may be redeemed again one of his brethren may redeem him so there's a lot of words in there a lot of you know sojourner was used you know all these different things was used so uh Let's look into it, you know, because we, we, we know that there's different definitions of these words, man. Okay, parak. So that's, that's, that's the word for rigor, that's parak. All right, so gar is the word for, uh, let me look, sojourner. And, and Tosh, uh, Tosha, let me make sure. Let me make sure. Sojourner is a uh, gar. And stranger is Tashab. So now Tashab is being used as stranger. Sojourner or stranger. Gar, a sojourner, a temporary inhabitant, a newcomer lacking inherited rights of foreigners in Israel, though conceded rights. You see? Which, which really, this one is going into like Israelites that come through because there was the uh, heathen didn't get all the same rights, okay? The heathen didn't get all the same rights that we got. It was our land; they was tributary to us. Like we just read, they shall be. We gonna take them as an inheritance. You see, they gonna be our bondmen, but over our brethren, we shall not rule them. You know. We're going to buy them, buy them heathen, man. You know, so let me see. That's pretty much what I had, man. I just want to go into that briefly back and forth of the different types of ways that uh, heathens and uh, heathens and um, uh, strangers and all these different things could be uh, thought of, man, could be thought of. I guess I'll just grab a few quick precepts just kind of showing, you know, and we were uh that we were considered heathens at, at different times and we were considered strangers man we were considered strangers uh let me see let me get 
Oh yeah. How do you spell this admonish? Titus 3 and 10 says, A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Uh, let me see. Oh, that ain't the one. There's one that say cast him out as a heathen man. That's actually going into when you try to reprimand somebody. You try to reprimand somebody and they get cast out as a heathen. You got to remember there was a point in time where we was we, the most high was trying to correct us, and we wasn't we wasn't following through, and so we got cast away as a heathen. Let's see if I can find it. Matthew eighteen and seventeen says, "And if he shall neglect to hear them." Tell it unto the church, but if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Okay, and this was during the this was during the time of the uh, the Messiah, man. You know, if I'm not mistaken, you know. Yeah, so if they didn't obey, okay, the laws and statutes and commandments, if they didn't go according to procedure, they was treated like a heathen, and so were the children of Israel, man. Okay, they live like heathens and they were cast off by the Most High for their heathenistic behaviors, man. And there's different connotations, man. So those heathens that are uh, the, the, the heathens of salvation are the children of Israel. Okay, that's a real quick lesson, you know. Uh, Lord willing, it was edifying. I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Yahweh Double honor to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the whole for the elect. With that, I want to say shalom.